Why, hello there, beautiful friends from around the world. My name is Real to Real, and uh, <laughs> yeah, hey guys, what's good? My name is D Free, and if you guys couldn't tell, I'm joined by Real to Real, aka Mark. Since you've already spoiled the introduction, man, how are you doing? <laughs> My laugh spoils the introduction. That's that's fabulous. Anyway, uh, thank you, D Free. Thank you for having me on again. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely, no problem, man. It's it's always a pleasure. And yes, your laugh did spoil it. Hashtag. <laughs> Mark has the best laugh on YouTube. Anyways, uh, today's video, guys, while Mark is still chuckling in the background, we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Super and the Omniverse Tournament. Now, we don't know when this is coming exclusively, or exactly, excuse me, but we know that we're going to get the Future Trunk stuff coming up next, but eventually we will probably see this unless they're just basically pulling shit out their ass and teasing people. But today we're going to be giving you guys eight things total that we want to see from that arc. So, Mark, go ahead and get us started here, bro. Well, it's actually interesting that you bring up, we don't know when we're going to get it, because honestly, right now we have 72 episodes that have actually been confirmed for Dragon Ball Super, and my very first one is actually, I don't want it to happen anytime soon. I think the one thing Dragon Ball Super needs in general is a long arc, not something that's 9 episodes, 14 episodes, 12 episodes, whatever have you. We need something, this next Trunks arc needs to be that kind of encompass like it needs to be around 30 episodes in general to actually have some kind of impact so i don't want them to just do trunks and then go straight into the tournament like some people are thinking i want this tournament to either not happen at all or completely just you know be after episode 72 or if not longer in the series i think that would be interesting no, so I completely agree with you. I think longer arcs are definitely the way to go. But now, now guys, for the moment you guys have been waiting for, <laughs> Papi Chulo's number one, or his first one, my bad, number four. We're going to work my way to number one. Papi Chulo D free. Uh, so the first one would be, uh, well, the fourth one. Anyways, whatever. I want to see some interesting abilities. I, I liked the way that they did that with Universe 6, where we saw guys like Mogeta, Botamo, and Hit. You know, Kaba doesn't really classify because he's just kind of just like a regular guy. And we didn't really get too much from the other guy. So I'm not really going to talk about the other guy. I'm not even going to give him a name because he's just that guy that I hate, Frost. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he just was a cheater, basically. I want to see some interesting abilities. I do. I really think that exclusively Mogeta, because he's my favorite out of the bunch, I really think that that was a really interesting distance design just concept for a character the metal man he's just basically like this molten lava guy he spits lava he fires lava oh, that, that was an awesome concept so i want to see some interesting characters with some really interesting abilities well i completely agree and the one thing about like actually having new characters is the whole concept of having mirror universes hopefully these another these like 10 universes that we're going to see that we haven't seen already are really interesting because they will come in and none of these will be even remotely related to almost anything we've ever seen before. So everyone's gonna have their weird and interesting abilities. I'm really, fingers crossed for that. But my number three, and this is funny because like you and me are in a completely different like scale or level in terms of thinking about what we want or not. So maybe like this is an interesting list. But typically, because because we just saw another arc, my third one is actually, more than anything, I want to see this arc or this tournament somewhat interrupted. I feel like it will be really interesting and really, very, very hard for them to actually introduce enough fighters, be it like five or even three fighters from every single universe. Like there's 12 universes, guys. How is like we're going to be sitting around introducing 80 fighters or something, plus the gods of destruction and all this other stuff like everyone kind of comes together is going to be so much more than Dragon Ball has even ever done before. Even in the other world tournament, the filler arcs where they had complete room to like just kind of mess around and do whatever they want. It's going to be crazy. So just kind of letting this fight go for like maybe the first round or two and then completely kind of jump off and do something really interesting outside this tournament having kind of met and visually seen these people this person this person and all these other places it would be interesting to actually have someone come in and interrupt the entire flow flow of the tournament yeah definitely and on that same vein my next one here is that i personally want other characters to get some goddamn backstories yo 
I don't want it to be just like, oh, this guy is just the guy that's been there for forever. Deal with it, you know? Like, I want to know a little bit about these characters that we're getting introduced to because obviously if you're going to bring new lore in, I mean, it's just beneficial to everybody. You know, if you explain at least a little bit of it, you know, this character is from this race like you did in the Universe 6 stuff. I really like how they did that. They explained that Mogeta was a metal man, even though I would like for them to have gone a little bit more in context with a character like Botamo because they really didn't say anything about him. Mm -hmm. You know, they gave us a little bit about Kaba. They sp explained a lot about Frost and, you know, basically everything they told us was a lie, by the way, which is another reason why I don't like Kaba, but, or uh, Frost, excuse me. But I, I really do think that, you know, when it comes to new characters, you can only do yourself a justice by explaining a little bit about them, their history, because, you know, you don't have to do that about the guys that we're accustomed to because we've obviously been watching them throughout their progression throughout the entirety of the series. We know them. We know their past. We know everything about them. Now, when you introduce somebody new, especially like a character that's going to play a prominent role for X number of episodes, like a hit, for example, we, we really never even got any context to, to be honest. We were just told he's a hit man. He's, been, he's like thousands of years old or a thousand years old, whatever. You know, I think that you need to explain at least some of this if we get an interesting character or two. Yes, exactly. And going off that exact same note, obviously, I have my number two is exactly God Rivals. Now, we've seen Rivals kind of played out in tournaments before with, you know, the Crane Hermit and the Turtle Hermit kind of schools kind of fighting each other. If Beerus and Champa have somewhat of a different God Rival that they're kind of, you know, fighting against or have some kind of grudge against, somebody I talked to, I can't remember who, and if you're listening to this, I'm really sorry if you're the one who told me and I just can't remember at this point. But, you know, a god rival who's also kind of a dog. <laughs> like a, a dog <laughs> against, like, these two cat-like gods or something like that it would be really hysterical and something like, visually pleasing for all the the fans out there. Just, like, someone... If, if you're going to focus on all these different characters in these tournaments and someone, like, getting backstory for one particular team or the other, we need kind of something to drive a rivalry between Goku and his friends and everyone, like Goku and Vegeta and everyone else to that particular rivalry. And that's kind of what we're looking at is, can we have someone, another team that we're looking at, kind of a, a Universe 6 team that can face Universe seven and six to that degree definitely no i completely agree with you and my next one this is my number two here guys this is my number dos <laughs> numero doso or whatever the correct terminology is i'm just speaking a whole lot of spanish in this episode you know i got got me a, a little hispanic now i'm just i'm just i'm just i'm not even playing that but we're gonna just keep going uh <laughs> on topic again uh so the next one for me guys is basically i want some sort of power scaling it, you know let me let me say this right now Dragon Ball Super doesn't give a shit about the scaling. It will blatantly, blatantly, and I'm sorry if this is your favorite show. I'm not talking bad about it. It's just reality. It will blatantly contradict itself over and over, but that's fine. That's perfectly fine in the context of this video. What I'm talking about is in the Universe 6 stuff, or not the Universe 6 stuff, I'm sorry, this Omniverse tournament, I want this stuff to make sense. I don't want them to put X character versus Y character, but X character stronger than Z character, but Z character beats Y character, if that makes sense <laughs> to you. Like, I want this shit to make freaking sense, please. Like, for example, for, for perfect example, while Piccolo was being tactful, air quotes up, had he beaten Frost, which he technically did, it would have, while once again, Frost cheated, now I'm gonna keep that asterisk in there, it would look weird in the context of this tournament if Piccolo beats a Frost while Frost beats a Goku, but Frost doesn't cheat to beat the Goku. So I want this shit just to make sense, please. This show just, it just kind of just does this shit where it mind fucks you into it's like, okay, well, this guy is stronger than this guy. But wait, I told you this guy was already stronger than that guy. So like, I just want it to make sense. That's it. That's all I got to say. Well, you know, in terms of actually coming in and being like, okay, well, this doesn't make sense or this doesn't make sense. As long as they sit there and kind of explain that Whis and Beerus are just absolute liars to J <laughs> Goku and Vegeta this <laughs> whole time, which would kind of make sense. As long as those two are absolute liars, then everything kind of makes sense. Even if they're liars to themselves, just kind of expressing like how much power they have versus how much power Goku and Vegeta have or something, it would make absolute sense. So my my very first one, honestly, this is something that goes along with everything that we've ever seen in Dragon Ball. The one thing, if we're going to sit there and actually be introduced to all 12 universes at the exact same time in this series at any point, I want there to be a defining line that makes universe six and I get, or no, universe seven, and I guess universe six, the defining universe and the reason that we followed this particular story throughout this, this many generations or this many years, decades, 
this entire time. And I think the one thing is you have to make Universe 6 and 7 special because of the Dragon Balls. The Dragon Balls cannot have to be kind of just kind of of themselves in Universe 6 and 7. No other universes can have Dragon Balls. If any other universe at this point, for whatever reason, has Dragon Balls, it's going to make me question the very necessity of actually following Goku or anything because there's a lot of rumors out there that say like well maybe there's Gokus in other universes which I completely detest because the whole concept of mirror universes and stuff would kind of indicate that all the other 10 universes have no Gokus especially if universe 6 doesn't have Goku or any or Vegeta or anything like that so universe 6 and 7 to me absolutely have to be the only universes at this point who actually have Dragon Balls and just going off that a little bit, something that I always talk, already talked about was Goku and, or Beerus and Champa, because that everyone has Dragon Balls, because this is such a weird universe and everything, I would like for these guys to be kind of uniform and kind of more characteristic, more kind of animated than everyone else in every other universe. It would be kind of a funny dynamic. So that's what I have to say about that. That's all I have to say, really. <laughs> Definitely. No, I, I agree. I, I think that this that's just kind of the same concept basically the show just needs to keep stuff on one level and not divert too much from the groundwork that they lay so basically my number one dun, 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 uh, the number one is gonna this be guy. that i <laughs> i had to get a drum roll man i don't want it to be the goku and vegeta show please 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 and i'm gonna just directly reference the last tournament machin Buu was useless he was asleep the whole tournament. Piccolo was forced, I, I quote, I, I swear, I promise you, forced to disqualify himself, even though he won the match. Forced. Okay. Who else was there? Who, who else was there besides Goku and Vegeta? Monaka. Monaka. But this guy was out cold the entire tournament. <laughs> now, the thing is that, the thing is that, if Mark, you haven't seen the latest episode, his, his whole progression with how he knocks out, it's hilarious. You need to watch the episode. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the thing is that Monaki, I can't really say this about him because they quote unquote, or not, not, not quote, they kind of let him get the victory at the end. But still, he was useless. He was useless because hit through the match anyway. <laughs> so like it was the Goku and Vegeta. So let's just be real about it. I want to see whether it's Gohan kicking some butt or Gotenks not being a joke for once in this series or, you know, Piccolo kicking his butt. I want to see something, somebody else, you know, like it gets kind of boring honestly it does just seeing goku and vegeta being the center of this show continually over and over while this show blatantly you know shits on everybody else and what the problem with that is is to they don't just basically ignore everybody else they basically put other characters in a position to be used as a pedestal for goku and vegeta over and over and over in the series so i i just i just don't want to see that anymore i mean it got so bad to the point where freaking gohan got batted like a freaking baseball when, when it was the booze with the, the the beer song you know he, he picked up boo that wasn't even in the movie i don't want to see anything like that i want to see somebody have some significance man please that's that's just all i that's all i gotta say man it's especially and not to interrupt but especially when other characters especially boo can play a much more important role in like almost every single saga that they've actually put on screen at this point it's ridiculous basically and they keep jerking you around with boo specifically it's like oh i'm gonna be there hercule i'll do it for you oh and the resurrection f arc oh where's boo oh yeah that's right he's asleep the bit he's the one that starts this whole arc off with the whole interaction with beerus basically so like that's basically kind of you giving him a prominent role he even jumps up and tries to fight the dude okay he gets his butt kicked fine at least he did something you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like at least he did something <laughs> So, like, I just want to see somebody else do something other than Goku and Vegeta, please. I mean, I love those characters, but, like, damn, it gets kind of old after a while. Especially if the series will be at least 72 episodes and stuff like that. I don't want to see that for the duration of the series. Just, like, come on, give somebody the spotlight for a moment. But that is it for the list. We want to know a few things down below. Uh, three. God damn it, three. Don't leave me a list of 50 things. Three <laughs> things that you, you personally, the viewer, would want to see in the next arc of Dragon Ball Super. Inside Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> Inside Dragon Ball Super Omniverse Tournament. But no, thank you Jar for uh, joining me today, Mark. I was going to call you Jabberwocky. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's been a fun list. I, I, I really hope that like all the things we said here kind of pan out, honestly. You know, none of them will. No, Anyways, obviously. 
Anyways, no, no, no. You know none of them will because we always do this. We always talk about what we want and it never happens. So no, no. It's just a fun video for the guys watching the video. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, as you would say. Yes. But uh, no, no. Thanks for joining me, man. Nonetheless, always a pleasure. You guys, check out Real to Real. It will be linked in the description for you guys. But we'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. Bye.